Um, see, the past couple of days in math, we've been working on looking at picture graphs and being able to read them. Today, we're going to learn about a different type of graph. It is basically telling us the same information, but it just looks a little bit different. So, when we look at this graph, what do we see on the graph? We see shoes. What types of shoes are they? Very good. Could we sort ourselves on who has laces and who does not have laces on their shoes? Sure. And this is exactly what they did here. They sorted the shoes that have laces and the shoes that do not have laces. So that's very easy to see on this graph. And what else can we see? We can see a, um, a lines at the bottom of the, the thing. Lines. Where? Come right. point to it. At the bottom. Come point to it. Oh, yeah, that's for some, that's to answer questions on that, right? Because we can answer questions according to the graph. You are right. But let's look at the graph. What do I notice that's on the graph? Uh, circles. Okay, very good. We do notice circles. What are these circles for? How many children? Okay, how many children in each row? Okay, what else do you notice? That there's less circles on the bottom. Okay, we can look at our graph and notice that I have less circles on the bottom row than the top row. Could that help me um, answer a question? Yeah. Could it help me ask a question? Yeah. Very good. What else do you notice? The title. Ooh. They have a title. Okay. <coughs> have all of our graphs have titles? Yes. Yeah. That's kind of important. Yeah, we could. Definitely. Okay. Very good. So Emma's class made this picture graph. What question could Emma's class answer using the graph? So we've had lots of questions about the graph. Now I want you to write a question for the graph. Does anyone have any ideas on what we could ask? Which one has the most? Okay, very good. Which, we could write the question, which one has the most? And what do I need at the end of my question? A question, okay, question mark. Okay, what is another question I could ask? Um, what are some features? That's true. I could ask what our sneaker is, but is this chart going to help us answer that? No. Nope. No, it's not. So I want a question that this chart or this graph will help us answer. Does that make sense? How uh, uh, are all of This graph isn't about whether they like them or not. This graph is what are what they are wearing. So without my graph wouldn't exactly. A better question would be how many students wore shoes, maybe. So then my answer would be 16. Okay? So we're going to have to work on our questions. Whenever you read the questions today on your, um, on your, on your graph, you need to pay attention to what they're asking so that you can answer or ask those same questions on different charts. Okay? So today, um, well, we've been working on picture graphs, but today we're going to learn about bar graphs. A bar graph shows information, just like a picture graph shows information. You can compare the lengths of the bars. What title describes this graph? Let's take a look at this graph. It looks just a little bit different than our picture graph, doesn't it? So what title could I use? Because notice, my title is missing, isn't it? What title could I use 
for this bar graph. Okay, I like it. Using tools. If someone else had something just a little bit different, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, as long as it goes with um it goes with the graph or the bar graph. Okay. So what types of tools are on our bar graph? Arts tools. How did you know that? It says right there. Yeah, it's a label labeling these things. Okay, so what types of art tools do I have? Does everyone see that? Very cool. And instead of using a picture, what did they do? They squares. used squares, and what did they do with the squares? Well, they they colored them in for each person, okay? Then, what are these numbers down here? How many boxes there are. Okay, they're how many number of children that chose that. So, if the box comes to this line, what number is it? Six. Six, so the paintbrushes are six. This line comes down to the five, so there are five that chose markers and then this line stops at the two and so they chose crayons. Okay, two of them chose crayons. Look at this first grade. One, two, three, four, five questions on this chart only. That's a lot of questions that they can ask about this chart. So when you read those questions, you really need to think about it because that could be something that you could ask in the future about your graph. Okay, that's something that we're going to be working on is asking questions about a graph. Now, the other thing that I want to look at here real quick is notice this says how many, how many, how many more. Do you see the difference? What does how many more mean? It doesn't, it has, it doesn't have a partner. It does not have a partner. So number one and number two are asking, just look at the chart and look how many. That's all you have to do is count how many on um, paintbrushes here and on crayons here. But this one is asking who doesn't have a partner who does not have a partner okay so looking at these three questions does that help us with this what is one question i could ask that i can look at this chart and answer the question um um how many more, more races than no races. Very good. That is an excellent question. I can ask how many more laces than no laces do I have? Can I look up at this chart and answer that question that he just asked me? Yes. Yes, I can. That is an excellent question. Does anyone else have a different question? Wonderful question. How many shoes have laces? What am I going to put at the end? A question mark. Can I look up at the graph and answer that question? Yeah. Yes, I can. What is another question? Have one in your brain. What is another question? How many more laces? Okay, very good. We already asked that one, but you're right. That is a good question. Very good. 
how many kids wear no laces on their shoes? Is that something we could look up here and answer? Yeah. Okay. I like that. Do you hear that? It's a little bit different than how many more wore laces than no laces. Now he says how many fewer wore no laces than laces. Does that mean basically the same thing as how many more? I'm still looking for who does not have a partner. So if I look, these two are partners, these two are partners, all of these are partners. Now, how many does it have partners? First thing? Four. four. So there are four fewer laces than no laces. I can answer that question. That was unexpected.